Hey, Cypher here. The channel hit 500 subscribers recently, so let's hope it continues to grow. So I just finished up the quarter here at school, and I figured I would do something a little different for the meantime. You see, I want to build up enough episodes so that I can release them steadily throughout the next couple quarters, so that I don't have to get distracted while I am doing schoolwork. So for the next few weeks in December, I'm going to be releasing these kind of podcast episodes. I'm not really going to do any kind of video editing or anything like that. It's just a podcast, I guess. But I'm just going to speak off the cuff about something I like or care about. So for today, I've noticed that some of my episodes on America's Small Wars have been getting a lot of attention recently, and I figured you guys should know about some of the influences that I have in terms of choosing which episodes and especially what books I read in order to create these. And I can't really think of a book that's more important or integral to the entire series that I've been doing than a book that was written by Max Boot. The name of the book is called Savage Wars of Peace. And he tries to look at American small wars and try to put them into a larger continuum and analyze them as not entirely separate events, but part of a more global strategy for the American government. Now he's only looking at foreign wars, so he's not paying attention to the Indian wars or the labor wars or any of that kind of stuff. Nor is he looking at little conflicts like Bleeding Kansas or anything like that. He's only focused on foreign wars. And I find this book to be incredibly interesting and powerful because the way that he analyzes this stuff is to put it into something that really challenges our entire understanding of peacetime. As I've said before on this channel, I'm sure, um, we're never really at peace. Not by a long shot. And Boot in this book really sets down and tries to understand why that is. So he starts off in the year 1800 trying to eliminate all the stuff from the founding of the United States and begins trying to explain how America tried to establish itself as a commercial power and the various wars that were part of establishing that. So he talks about our various fights with pirates, even in the Caribbean, to China in 1859, and even like our intervention into Korea and a whole bunch of other interventions. And really how that was our attempt to establish ourselves as a powerful, independent nation. The next step he looks at in part two is how we used that once we had become what he calls a great power. So he looks at our attempts to, like, colonize the Philippines or the Boxer Rebellion, all the way to our various interventions because of the whole big stick corollary that uh, Teddy Roosevelt was trying to institute and was really heavily enforced by Wilson, and especially Wilson's whole stupidity with involving us in so many wars. And then all the island campaigns and whatnot that we did, and even stuff like Pancho Villa, and how all of this is our attempts to make sure that we maintain our level of power in the uh, global politics. And then the final part that he looks at is what he calls us as a superpower. And this is mostly post-World War II, all of the conflicts and stuff that we have been engaged in since that war. And there's a lot. <laughs> Quite a lot. He even tries to look at how Vietnam could easily be considered a small war, and how we've moved away from understanding these small wars within the small wars doctrine, which actually came out back in the uh, late 30s. And that because of the Vietnam War and what is often called Vietnam fever, as in like our inability to countenance warfare and are constantly afraid of having another Vietnam. How that led to the Powell Doctrine and the utter failure to comprehend how to fight small wars because we have just continued to have that whole Vietnam fever. 
So this is a really powerful book, and we could learn a lot from it. Especially if you are interested in American small wars, and just generally a bunch of wars you've probably never heard of. This is a book you really ought to pick up. So, once again, it's Max Boot and the Savage Wars of Peace. By the way, tell me how you like the format um, in the comments or whatever, and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.